Hey, hello. We back at it again. Uh, okay. All right, now, if you watched the previous shorty I did before this short video, shorty, uh, about um, sharing as well as elastic thread. Yeah. So while I was researching my sharing, I read as far as what I'm going to say. I found, I saw the elastic thread in it that also came to mind. All right, now, so how do we use these techniques, right? Or what will we use these techniques for? See here, see, you go to a yard sale. Uh, maybe you already have one. Or you go to the uh, other place, and I always forget, Salvation Army store, okay? And you find a, a denim vest or you have a, a you find a denim jacket. Right. And or maybe you had a denim jacket and you turned it into a denim vest and you really loved love it. But you want it to be a jacket again. Right. So you just want to add sleeves to something already, you know, adding sleeves to a denim vest or could be a leather vest be almost anything <clears throat> all right the technique go oh, I'm, I'm gonna show you today could be used for just about any vest even this one here even that vest though it would be uh, a little odd that vest looked like my pattern I lost a couple years back anyways all right so we go now to the lesson. All right. Yeah. Is, this is a uh, mutton sleeves, right? Mutton sleeve. Let me get rid of all this other stuff. Okay. Mutton sleeves. So you have a variation of mutton sleeves, right? You have this one. It's the most common one right here, number one. Number two is pretty good. It's basically uh, the sleeve, and you just puff up the cuff, right? What I'm showing you is mostly for the sleeve cap but you can do the same techniques for the cuff see that cuff there on number four that one is the elastic thread right so you would do the you would do the uh manipulation of the sleeve cap and the cuff for this one but then you use the elastic thread for like three inches or four inches at the end there for the cuff you know this is a very nice one that one's a little different because you're going to cut it but i'm not going to show you six i'm showing you five and one but like i said the techniques i'm using you for five five that's a circle sleeve not a mutton sleeve it's a circle sleeve but the techniques I'm going to show you for five and one can be used for four and two as well as three. You're probably going to use it for six, but I guess that's basically for someone who's more advanced or if you are fast learning and you got the basic understanding. Okay, so we start with our sleeve sloper as usual right here. You know, you trace it on to a blank piece of paper, the piece that we are going to uh, cut and manipulate and all of that, of course. And I always speak about the paper, make sure it's 45 inches wide. For Steve, you can use a 36 inch wide paper, you know, buy it at Staples online or many other places online or you can go into a staple store or an art supply store you know here in texas they got a hobby lobby 
you can get this from Hobby Lobby. Mostly everything you need, you can get from Hobby Lobby. I've been there, so Hobby Lobby is nice if you're on this side of the states, right? Okay, so we trace it, trace our sleeve sloper. Make sure you got your notches, back notches, front notch, shoulder notch, you know. Now, for the mutton, right, you're going to cut this cap right here. So you would draw a line from that corner to that corner, right? And you will cut this cap off. Oh, and make sure you have this line here. That's the center of the sleeve. Do not get that confused with the shoulder notch, which is right here. Right. Shoulder notch, center of the sleeve. That's also your grain line. That's the way you want to line it up in grain. And just to mention a little bit on the grain line, it's straight, of course. So how would you match that up? Just say the edge of your fabric the salvage edge, the natural edge, the side is right there, right? So you would measure, you would measure from here to here, whatever that distance is, you do the same thing at the bottom, from here to there. That makes sure that you have the straight grain of your fabric, right? You know, just a little note reminder. Okay, so you cut the cap off. And when you cut your cap off, and you have that right there. Right? And then you're going to cut it again. That's why you need that center line. All right? Now, this bottom section here, well, for this mutton here, for that mutton right there, you leave the bottom alone, right? There's another one. The picture is not here, but I've seen it. And I also have that here. I'm going to show you too. All right. So once you do that, of course, you're going to manipulate it like this. You're going to open it up, split it, put keep the uh, ends there right of course you have another piece of paper underneath this so you can tape it all down with masking tape which is paper tape best to use when you're doing paper patterns right and this gap here can be whatever you want because the wider your gap the puffier you're going to have your mutton at the shoulder your shoulder mutton i would call it a shoulder mutton right because it's on the shoulder shoulder mutton sleeve so once you put in the amount of sharing or gathering you're going to use, right? And I mentioned before that then you're going to go from these, the front, the back notch here, and this is the front notch, two for the back, one for the front, your notches, right? Sleeve notches, and you're going to start from there. If you don't want to mess up your notches and leave, just start a little bit behind it. You know, you know, and then you would go ahead and use your sharing foot. I spoke about that in the last video, and you would go ahead and share it around. Oh, what I didn't mention was where you would do your uh, sharing stitch. Usually, you would do it directly on the line that you would stitch. So if you have you have a half inch seam allowance right so yes you would make your sharing line one half inch away from the edge so when you put the sleeve in you're stitching directly on your sharing line and the reason why you want to do that is because you want it to look like that see that the gathers come directly out from the seam line that's what you want so in order to achieve that, you make sure you put your sharing line one half inch away directly on top of your stitching line. 
So when you stitch it back, boom, you're stitching on that. And if you don't do it like that, what's going to happen is when you uh, stitch it, say you put your uh, sharing line a quarter inch away from the edge. And when you stitch it back in with your half inch seam allowance, you're going to catch some of the sharing and it's going to turn into folds. It's going to look like a curtain. You know how the folds are in a curtain. You know, look like uh, pleats. They're going to look like pleats. You don't want it to look like pleats. You want it you want it to come directly up out of your seam line and just puff on out. So make sure your sharing line is one, one half inch away from the edge, which is your seam allowance, your stitch line, right? So once you get the amount of puff you want and you trace it, I mean, you uh, tape, put your paper underneath it, you tape it all down and you already know where you're going to share it from and how much happened and you go ahead and do that now the other one is this one all right the first one we cut at the cap right from here to there we cut the cap this one you're cutting at the elbow line that way the sleeve from the elbow down would be normal and from the elbow up you would get the puff like i said you do it the same way right oh i forgot that let me fix that i forgot to make my uh notches part of it one sec one sec Okay, like I said, we spread it out. Oh, and if you want to know what I'm using this program here, I'm going to show you at the end, near the end or whatever. I'm going to show you in a set in a little bit. So, and something else I uh, forget to mention. You see that they're even right trying to even it out they're going to be even from this center line i uh, i put the center line and you can do that on your paper as well you know when you uh after you cut it you put your other piece of paper underneath it redraw your center line your sleeve center line center of the sleeve make it long as as i see it, as you see here going through the original sleeve so you can have a, a good vision of what you're doing because this space from the center line to here has to be the same on this side there even we're making it even unless you're doing a little uh style with yours and you want your puff only you want it more on the back and less on the front well then you would put more space on the back than you do at the front or yes you can put nothing on the front and put everything on the back right but if you do it like this all the sharing all the puff is on the back of the sleeve you're going to have to extend the uh, amount that you share because i said before you would start from here at the notch so if you're only going to put it on the back you would go a little bit further past the notch right to do your sharing line up and then maybe come a little bit past the center front just a little you know that's something i just thought up oh wow my notch i didn't put it right all right so yeah and you would do this the same way. Redraw your cap line using your hip curve. And same thing, you would start from the notch and share around to the other notch. Right? Now, since you have this center line there, so where would your shoulder notch be? Of course. Your shoulder notch would be a little bit 
from center towards the front. It will be right there. Right? So when you're sharing it, you know, it will be when you share it and all the gathers together, it will be a little bit difficult to see the shoulder notch. But if you cut the shoulder notch into the fabric itself, once you do the sharing, you'll be able to find it because it'll be the only uh, section of the seam allowance that's split. And only make your notch, your cut, three-eighths, quarter of an inch. If you make it a half inch, you're going to have to stitch behind that, which means you're going to stitch up more than a half inch, and that's going to mess up your sewing. So be mindful of that, right? Now, the circle sleeve. Aha. Now, it's just going to be, you start with this part here, the inside circle, right? The inside circle. It's not going to, I must have made it all one piece already. So you start with the inside circle, perfect circle. Now, the size of your circle is going to depend on your sleeve. So you would measure the sleeve from the from the the front the side seam to the shoulder seam front back right so this would be your side seam you would measure from uh, inside whatever wherever you're going to put the sleeve right whatever that side seam to the shoulder notch measurement is right for both front and back, you would add them up together, and then that's what you this circle would have to be. From here, going all the way around, will have to be the same as the total of your front sleeve and back sleeve uh, in the arm socket measurement. Whatever that total is, that's what this is going to have to be, this circle. Yes, it's, it's going to be a little tricky making that circle and getting it, but you might have to make a few circles before you get that one circle that is the exact measurement of the front and back sleeve armhole measurement you see you still put your notches there two for the back one for the front and the shoulder seam right make sure you have that your notches for it and now this space from the this is going to be the cutout part right there, of course. Now, whatever, however you want the length of your sleeve, you see here, that's like uh, it's not even elbow length. This sleeve, it might be a little, it might be elbow length, it might be a little shorter than elbow length, right? So whatever length you can have a full length circle sleeve, you know, when you put your arms up, it look like wings, all right. So, but whatever the length of your sleeve, that's what you're going to do from this out, this inner circle out here to your other circle. So, if it's uh, your elbow is usually 12, 13 inches, right? So, this space would be 10 inches, 10 inches and a half, half inches is going to be for your rolled hem. It's going to be a rolled hem for a circle sleeve. So, you would measure 10 inches all the way around all the way around and draw your next circle you know measuring 10 inches mark it 10 inches 10 inches 10 inches 10 inches mark it redraw the next circle and you cut one right there or you don't have to cut but if you cut it it makes it easier you know and then start from your side seam, stitch around, make sure your shoulder notch hits your shoulder seam on your garment, and then go on back around, finish it off. And when it falls, of course, it looks like that, number five here. It's very nice. A circle sleeve is very nice. If you want to be classy or whatever, it's very classy. And if you haven't noticed, I am someone who loves the 40s and 50s, some 60s garments. I love the dresses and the, the clothing from the 40s, 50s, and 60s, my favorites. All right, so you have your mutton sleeve from the elbow, mutton sleeve, sleeve cap. Oh, one more thing. 
Now, another trick you can do with the elastic thread. Okay, if you use this one or that one, it doesn't matter. You can do the elastic thread and stitch it going across this way to make this part fitted to the sleeve, to your body, to your arm. This part would be from the elbow to the cuff would be fitted to your sleeve with the elastic thread, which would make it stretchy, nice and comfy. And then you, you will have your mutton. Or you can just do like the other one and just only do three inches right here from here, three inches up and just do a couple of lines of the uh, elastic thread. And I would suggest if you do, the, when do you stitch the elastic thread lines, make them a half inch apart. I mean, you can make them a quarter inch apart, but make them a half inch apart, three quarters of an inch apart. It, it, it looks, it's much nicer and neater when you do them a half inch or three quarters of an inch apart. It's up to you. Or another thing I, I thought about, do it from here to here. All right, what would be the cup will be three inches, right? So three inches away from that edge, right? That so you would do your stitch elastic stitch lines this way, elastic thread stitch lines like that, half inch apart, going all the way over. It that's just a nice little, you know, a little nice style, you know. People see your sleeve, they're going to be amazed and like, oh, that's nice. Where'd you get that from? You know, just a little something. So you have your mutton sleeves. And like again, watch the uh, previous video before this to where I just go. I'm talking only about the sharing and the elastic thread. All right. Yeah, this, this, mutton, this mutton sleeve, I just talked about here with the elastic thread is kind of like this you know without cutting a separate piece because these are two separate pieces right but you can do the same thing with the elastic thread one piece you know oh and this same thing but this is a little different maybe next time leave a comment if you want to know about this particular sleeve here you know, say something about it in the comments, mention it in the comments. And of course, I'll do a lesson on that. All right. So that's it. And you know what I say? Hold up. I got to be fly with it. You know, I have to be fly with it. Maybe I'm doing too much. <laughs> Subscribe like hit the uh bell for notifications and i will see you next time on the next video all right enjoy